I'm Zach Smith from Route 113 Boat Sales. Congratulations on your new Cobia 320cc purchase. We're going to do a quick walkthrough orientation going through all the switches, features, and functionalities of your boat um, so that we don't have any in-person uh, in customer to employee interaction um, during the coronavirus situation we have going on right now. So we're going to start at the beginning. Uh, beginning every day, battery switch panel. Your battery switch panel is located inside of here. On this panel we have our port start, our starboard start, and our house batteries. All three of these switches must be in the on position in order to operate the boat. Right next to that we have a yellow emergency parallel switch. The emergency parallel switch is for when your engine batteries are dead. You can flip this switch on and jump your engine batteries off of your house battery. Right below here we have all of our breakers, main breakers for the boat. So we have our power steering breaker. This is for the Optimus 360 power steering pumps. Right below that we have our helm panel breaker. The helm panel breaker is for all of your switches on the dash. If none of those work, that breaker has tripped. Right below that we have our hatch breaker. This is our breaker for our rear access hatch to the bilge. Next up from there we have our table breaker. This is for the bow table followed by our stereo amplifier breaker. This boat has a JL Audio stereo system with eight speakers and an eight channel amplifier. Right below that we have our electronics breaker. This is for all the electronics on the dash. Coming up to the top right here we have our 24 hour circuit which is our stereo memory, our forward and aft bilge breakers, and then a blank accessory breaker. Below that we have our windlass breaker. If your windlass stops working, chances are this yellow tab here has popped out and the breaker uh, and the breaker is tripped. Sometimes when this breaker trips, the little yellow tab will not pop. Just press the red button, push that back up till it clicks, and it should reset. Last but not least, there's a blank accessory breaker down here at the bottom. Moving around from there to our batteries. Inside of the leaning post, we have all of our batteries. Two banks, four in total. We have our port and starboard engine start batteries right here. On this side, we have our two house batteries. These are paralleled and they operate all the electronics on the boat. Up here on this wall, we have our two isolator breakers. These are 50 amp isolators. If these breakers are tripped and these little yellow tabs pop out, your house system will not charge. Press them back in to reset them. You'll get an alarm on your Garmin and it'll tell you, you know, low voltage or something along those lines. Check those breakers, they probably trip. Also in here, right here, we have our Pro Tournament 360 battery charger. This has a receptacle on the outside of the leaning post, I'll show you in a bit. But this is the battery charger for these four batteries. I recommend whenever you're using it. These batteries are about $330 a piece, and it's a good thing to maintain them and keep them up. Lift that up. These are locking latches too. The keys are in your blue owner's bag. Rotate and lock. Moving straight up from there, we have our LeBrock captain's chairs. These slide forward and aft and have armrests that drop down and then press the button in to flip them back up. They lock in the down position. Coming around from there to the dash. This boat has our pretty much standard now Garmin electronics package set in a black glass helm and magnetic Garmin covers. We'll talk more about the electronics here in a minute. First we're going to go over all of our switch gear and all of our trim tabs, windlass, uh, startup operations of the boat. So we're going to start with on the left hand side of the screen there we have our horn. That's your horn. First button there. Next one over from there is our nav anchor switch. The nav anchor lights up if you're running at night, which is our red-green up front and our white up top. 
back if you're anchored at night, which is just our white light. One over from there, we have our spreader lights. This is our forward spreader light. This is the spreader light on the front of the boat. Next one over from there, we have our aft spreader lights. Aft spreader lights are the two spreader lights on the back of the boat. The forward spreader also controls your middle spreader lights. Overhead lights is the next switch over from there. We have blue, middle position off, white, down, middle position off. On the subject of the middle position off switches, our nav lights. I get a lot of dead battery phone calls, and nine times out of ten, what we have is the nav light was left in the down position, so the anchor light was left on. Middle position off there. Coming over one from the overhead lights, we have our cockpit lights. Cockpit lights are the blue courtesy lights all around the boat. They're under the covering boards, they're in the bow, they're all over the place. Next one over from there is our compartment lights. On this boat, the bilge and the fish boxes have compartment lights in them. One over from there, we have our port live well, then our starboard live well. In your blue owner's bag, there is two stand pipes that screw in to the uh, live wells. They will fill to a certain level and then drain back out. Next one over from there, we have our fresh water. This boat has fresh water in uh, the starboard rear corner. There's a shower in the port rear corner. Then there is a sink inside the console. We'll look at all that in a little bit. Raw water wash down is underneath of your port rear covering board. Fish box macerators. The fish boxes on this boat will not pump out automatically. They have switches. It is a momentary switch, so you have to hold it up to pump it out, and it automatically goes to middle position off. Like I said, the fish boxes in the floor will not pump out automatically. One over from there, we have our forward bilge. Right above the forward bilge is a red light. If the red light is on, the bilge is pumping out. Right next to that, we have our aft bilge. Again, if the red light is on, the bilge is pumping out. If the float switches come on and start pumping, these lights will be on. One over from there, we have our underwater lights. Up for underwater lights, middle position off. The next two down there is accessory one, which is blank. Then we have accessory two and accessory three, which is also blank. One over from there, we have our windshield vent. Open and close. Then one over from there, we have our windshield wiper and our windshield washer. The windshield washer reservoir is located in the forward uh, floor storage compartment. It is not currently filled. A lot of my customers use Rain-X or something like that to fill, uh, for that, but it is not currently filled. Coming over to here, we have our windlass control. Up and down. We'll talk about that more when we go up to the bow of the boat. There's a couple things you need to know about the windlass. Right below that is our push to start buttons for our Yamaha. The key must be in the on position to activate the start buttons. Once you turn the key to the on position, press and hold those buttons and the engines will start. Your boat comes with two keys. One is black, one is chrome. The chrome key has a number on it. This number is 853. Write that number down somewhere so that if you do lose your keys, you can call us and get another one. Right above your key switch, we have our trim tab control. Um, this is exactly as you think it would operate. Press down for the bow to go down. They are wired backwards and in reverse, but that is your swim trim tabs. They have indicators down both sides. Coming over from there, we have our Yamaha dual binnacle control. You have a joint trim right here on the side, allows you to trim your engines up and down. You have individual trims on the top of this. You have blue lights here. If these turn yellow for any reason, call me. There's an issue with the control box. Not that we see that often, but that's not good. There's a button right here. We'll make them start flashing. If you want to free throttle your Yamaha and idle it up to warm it up in the slip or anything like that in the winter, 
press that button, they'll begin to flash and put the engines in gear. The engines will raise an RPM, but they, they will not actually be in gear. Simply come back to neutral, the, switch, the lights will stop flashing, and you'll be able to put the boat actually in gear. Moving over from there, we have our Optimus 360 uh, joystick system. The way this works, we have a take command button. So if you want to use the joystick, press take command, followed by operating the joystick. We also have an A, a C, and a boost button on here. I recommend waiting to use the boost until you get very comfortable with the joystick. This turns everything up to 11, so it, it will kind of overpower itself and you can get into some trouble if you don't know what you're doing. So wait to use that until you get very comfortable with the joystick. As far as operating the joystick, this is not a you know, video game, you're not going to gorilla it. You want to two fingers and pick your direction whether it be side, side, forward, or aft. Let's say you want to walk to the port side, you're going to hold the joystick over to the port. From there, you can then adjust the bow angle, whether you want the bow to tow in or you want the bow to tow out. You can jog the boat forward, bring it over to the side. This is also gradual, so you can speed up and drop the RPMs based upon how far over this is. You also have a forward, reverse feature and then you can go to the opposite side again anywhere you go here you can make adjustments to port starboard spin the boat by twisting the top um, this takes a little bit of getting used to unfortunately video doesn't really explain this all that well but pick a direction and stick with it so if your general direction is to the port start to the port and then you can twist and adjust forward aft the bow in bow out depending on what exactly you're trying to do. Your A and your C buttons on here are your C station. C station is the digital anchor feature. Touch A for position hold, touch C for heading hold. So if you want to sit exactly where you are but you don't care which direction you go, are, are going, press A. If you want to hold a heading but you don't but you want to drift, so say you want to drift side two, press C. If you want to hold your heading and position, press both of them. Once you press both of them, you will need to come up here and agree to a uh, uh, basically a lawyer warning saying that no one's going to go swimming while you have these features engaged. The props are moving, engines are shifting, not something you want to do. Moving up from there, right above that, I apologize everything is completely covered in pollen right now, but right above here cycle this on and off. We have our Optimus 360 gauge. Once this boots up, this will give you your forward neutral reverse for each engine. It will give you your engine RPM and your rudder, rudder position. The steering system on this boat uh, measures your speed and adjusts the steering response in this accordingly. Across the bottom here, we have our track, our heading, and our route. Track and heading are your autopilot features. So if you get on a certain course, let's just say 267 degrees, and you want to hold that course, hit the heading button. If you want to follow a track on the Garmin, hit the track button. If you program a route into your Garmin, which most people do not, but if you do, you can hit the route button and it will follow the route. This is your autopilot, okay? That's what it'll look like, and then you can jog port and starboard by using the arrow buttons right here, or lock your heading by using the heading button. Coming over one from there, we have our JL Audio Media Master 100 Stereo. A couple things to know about on this. First and foremost, the power button is also your source button. Once you select source, you can use your knob here to rotate through everything. So we're going to go over to FM. Once you're in FM, you can then seek by pressing and holding the channel buttons or go by the tenth by just touching it. Touch source again. 
can roll over to Sirius XM. This is not how you use your Sirius XM. I'll show you that in the Garmin later. One over from there, we have a USB. The USB is located down in the kick panel. You can plug your phone into this unit. Then one over from there, we have our Bluetooth. To pair your Bluetooth, go down to Connect Device and follow the instructions on the screen. This is going to involve looking for the Bluetooth on your phone and then pairing it up from there. Right below that, we have our Yamaha 6YC Information Station. This gives you all of your uh, engine data for the boat. So right now we have our engine RPM, our engine trim. Down across the bottom here we have water temperature, battery voltage, and oil pressure for each engine. Use the arrow key one over from there, we'll go to boat information. Boat information is your fuel and speed information. I don't recommend using this as your fuel gauge. If you press the cancel button, it will bring you over to used. As you can see, we've burned 9.2 gallons on this boat so far. If you hit set and set, it will zero that out. That's what I use as my fuel gauge. Um, this measures injector pulse width. It's spot on, dead on, accurate. If it says you burnt 17.1 gallons, you burnt 17.1 gallons. So every time I put fuel in the boat, I zero that out and then it starts a clock. So if this says 70 and I put 100 gallons in, I know I have 30 left. Coming back to here, down the, here we have our fuel economy in miles per gallon, we have our fuel flow in gallons per hour, and we have our total used, which is what I just showed you how to reset, in gallons. Like I said, that's my fuel gauge right there. Top right here we have our speed, and right below that we have our trip in miles. Coming one over from there we have Combo A. Combo A is our, it's a combination screen of fuel and engine information. This is where I keep my 90% of the time. That way I can see my engine RPM, I can see my trim level, and my fuel information all in one uh, handy screen. Next over from there is our troll mode. Troll mode is not something that I use very regularly. This is a, uh, it's really, I think, for people in the Midwest, stuff like that. But what it is, you can hit set, and you can adjust your engine RPM using the, the arrow keys here, and idle the engine up or down for trolling at a very specific speed. Again, not something I use very often, but it is there, it is an option. Now, moving up to the garments. You have two 8616s set in a glass helm here. Pollen is terrible. So, starting at the top, we have our favorite screen. Anything you do on this screen, you can also do on this screen. We're going to run through this one, and it's a combo, so you can do anything here that you want to do here. So, favorite. You want to set as favorites, just follow the instructions on the screen to do so. One below there, we have our smart mode. Smart mode, you can program so that when you hit fishing, you can set it up so that things happen on both screens. This one has not been programmed, but you can go into menu and you can add or edit layouts from there. Coming down one from there is our combo screen. We're going to talk about this more in a little bit after we go through our chart and sonar options. So our chart options, we have five chart options here. We have nav chart, fishing chart, 3D chart, and fisheye 3D chart. Our nav chart is what you're going to be using 90% of the time. This is all pinch pull to zoom. And as we slide out to the beach here, you can see that all of the bay is color shaded. We have depth soundings for the entire bay, and all of our channels and uh, buoys are already pre-programmed in there. As we slide offshore, let's just go look at the bass grounds. They are in there, they are labeled, the bass grounds are not currently a waypoint. If you want to make them a waypoint, simply touch it, hit add waypoint in the top left hand corner of the screen, and you will drop a waypoint on that target. 
in the uh, navigation chart mode, we don't have a ton of bottom contour information. There's the Baltimore Canyon. It has decent contour lines, but it's not overloaded. So that's it in the navigation chart. Now we're going to go look at the Baltimore Canyon in the fishing chart. Should be right around there. So as you can see in the fishing chart, you get a lot more detail, a lot more bottom contour information. On a day when you're fishing a water temperature break or something like that, the bottom contour is not that important, but days that you have blended water up and down the line, knowing where that cliff wall is, is important. It's uh, something to fish when you don't have anything else to fish. Stop panning at any point will bring you back over top of the boat. And as we look at the bay in your fishing chart, you'll notice that you've lost all your color coding, you've lost all your depth soundings, so you don't have any of that. So really, nav chart for any inshore use, Baltimore Canyon, if you want to go offshore fishing, fishing chart is the thing to use there. Coming over one from there, we have our 3D chart. 3D chart is exactly what it says it is. It's a kind of bird's eye view of everything. Not something I use very often, but it is there. It is an option. And then fish eye is something I really don't use. I don't know what this is supposed to be, um, but again, is there is an option. Last but not least, here's our radar overlay, and we're going to talk about that in the radar screen when we get down a couple more. Sonar options. We have five sonar options on this boat. This boat is equipped with two transducers, an Airmar B170L 1KW through haul chirping transducer, and then a GT51 transom mount transducer uh, that runs your clear view, your side scan, and all that fun stuff. So, with that said, your traditional sonar, we're going to put this on B175. So now this is your through haul. This is what you're going to use as your fish finder. The way Chirp technology works, the transducer sends out a barrage of frequencies and different fish will respond differently to different frequencies. So you can actually start to differentiate whether that's a tuna, a marlin, a, a rockfish in two, 300 feet of water based upon what you see on the screen. Now there is no cheat for that. It is a matter of, we saw that, we caught that, we saw that, we caught that. Um, but really, really neat technology um, and something I've become very, very fond of. This is a 1KW unit. This will not hold bottom in a thousand fathoms. It probably won't hold bottom in a hundred fathoms, maybe a hundred fathoms. Um, don't freak out about that. That's how they work. Um, when you're fishing in water that's 700 feet deep, you can go in and you can zoom in to you know the top 200 feet, or we keep ours at the top 200 feet of the water column, uh, but you can adjust from there. One over from that, we have our clear view. Clear view is our structure scanning transducer. This works as a, this is off your uh, transom mount transducer. This works as a uh, 260 or 455 hertz band that runs along the bottom like a scanner and picks up every little detail. Um, it's a tremendous structure finder. If it's a tank, you'll see the turret, you'll see the, you know, everything about the tank, but it's a terrible fish finder um, because it's such a narrow band. So use this for finding structure, wrecks, things like that, not so much for finding fish. Come down one from there, we have our side scan. Side scan is going to populate with a yellow line down the middle of the screen. Um, once it runs, you'll see stuff off one side or stuff off the other side. You can actually take your crosshairs, put it over there, and drop a waypoint on top of the wreck so that next time you don't come back to the area of the wreck, you come back to the wreck itself. Really neat technology. I'm a massive fan of that. I love that. Um, that's something that I've started to use quite a bit, uh, and I never used to. The next two options here are split zoom, where you can zoom in, let's just say, on 200 feet here and have this out to 1,000 feet or whatever. Um, you can zoom in on different bodies of the water column. One over from there is our split frequency. So you can run the 500 watt chirp on that side, you can run the 1000 watt chirp on the opposite side if you want to compare and contrast between your transducers. Again, not something I use very often. I typically stick to these three, but they are there, they are options. One down from there, we have our radar. Um, this boat is equipped with the GMR Phantom 24 radar. That gives you four radar options. Single range, dual range, overlay, and then dual overlay. 
Single range is where I run 90% of the time. So right now it says ready to transmit. In the top left hand corner of the screen, hit transmit on. The radar will go through the process of spinning up. You will be able to hear it. Um, anything in red here is a hard target. It's feedback. Um, in this environment, it's going to get a lot of feedback. If you're out on the water and you saw all this, then obviously you'd be looking at something. Um, next one over from there, we have dual range, which is exactly what it says it is. You can zoom one into 30 second mile rings and have that one at quarter mile rings or do whatever you want as far as zoom goes. I do use this a little bit, but I prefer a tighter close up view of the radar. Next one over from there, we have our radar overlay. Radar overlay overlays the radar onto the chart. Um, I don't like this. I don't think it's very easy to see what you're looking at. I like a black background with a hard red target, but that's just me personally. And then last but not least, we have a dual overlay, which gives you an overlay on one side, or overlay on one side, and then just your standard radar on the opposite side. The objects highlighted in green here are moving targets, and it's just getting feedback right now, but when you're on the water, you'll actually be able to track a moving target on that. Um, I operate my radar. If you go into menu and you hit the star right there, it has a bunch of radar presets. Below this, we have bird, factory setting, harbor, motion scope, offshore, sentry. I run in mine in motion scope 90% of the time. I like the look of it. I like the target tracking. Big, big fan of that. Last but not least here, we're in the active captain in the uh, Garmin app. Uh, all on this screen. In the top left corner, we have the Garmin Active Captain. Active Captain is an app that you can get on your phone. You can download that to your phone. You can come down to your boat. You can then upload waypoints, uh, update your software, things like that, right through the screen. Next one over from there is our vessel information. This is speed, heading, position, depth, info, all on that screen. One over from there is our media screen. Uh, this is where you're going to do most of your uh, most of your audio controls. So, with that said, if you hit menu, you hit devices, go to GXM53. This is how you're going to control. We're going to be on the screen. In here, we have our radio ID. That's how you're going to register your Garmin to activate your Sirius weather and your Sirius radio. The stereo must be on auxiliary. Auxiliary 1 in order for the Sirius XM to work. One over from there, we have our video input. This boat, this screen has the ability to run engine room cameras, FLIR night vision cameras, all kinds of stuff. That would all be in the video screen. This boat's not equipped with any of that, so it doesn't have anything there. One over from there, we have our Garmin Verb. The Garmin Verb is an action camera from Garmin. It's like a GoPro. No one knows they exist. Garmin has a great product and a terrible marketing department, but it is there, it is an option, and you can pair your Garmin Verb to your GPS. One over from the Verb, we have our inReach. The inReach is a satellite texting device. I have one, I love it. I highly recommend getting one. It's a great lifeline. Um, it gives you the ability to reach out and touch someone from you know anywhere in the world, really, uh, whether or not you have satellite or, or cell phone service. It compared to your cell phone, it compared to your Garmin, it's $400 and then $30 a month. Coming one over from there, we have our engine information. This isn't something I really foresee you using very much because we have the Yamaha gauge down here in the corner, but it is there, it is an option. One over from there, we have fuel information. Again, not something you're gonna use very much with the Yamaha 6YC gauge, but it is there. And then last but not least, we have a duplicate of our Yamaha 6YC gauge. This gives you all of your engine information, just like the gauge does, um, just relayed on a larger screen. 
Coming down here at the bottom, we have waypoints. If you set any waypoints, they'll be stored right down there. Settings. If you want to change any of the preferences on the unit, just go into the settings screen. Um, mark is going to drop a waypoint exactly where you're sitting, just by hitting the mark button. And last but not least, menu is how you would rearrange things or add stuff to favorites, depending on which screen you're in. You can edit layouts, create layouts, all that kind of stuff in the menu screen. On the lower left-hand side here, we have our Garmin VHF radio. The entire radio is housed right here in this control. In this control, up at the top, we have our screen. You can control what channel you're listening to by rolling this knob around here. You can put it in scan by pressing this button, followed by all, and it'll run through every channel in it. And if anybody starts talking on any of those channels, it'll stop and you'll be able to listen to it. This is very handy if you're offshore fishing and you hear somebody on the radio go, hey, go up one, and you don't know what channel they're going to, put it in scan, you'll be able to find them eventually. Um, hit exit and stop scanning. Coming over here, if you have an issue, press the red 16-9 button, it'll automatically take you over to the Coast Guard. One below that is our high load broadcast. We can broadcast in one watt or 25 watts by pressing this button. So if you want to just talk to somebody next to you, one watt. If you want to reach out and touch somebody who's a ways away, 25 watts would be better. Down here we have clear, which just takes you back to where you were. Menu, this is how you would enter your DSC information. So hit menu, roll down to DSC, and then go to my MMSI number to enter your MMSI number. Um, anytime you turn the batteries on, this is going to beep at you and say you need to enter your MMSI number, and it will continue to do that until you do that. I believe you can set that up on Boat US's website. Coming over one from there, we have our volume and squelch control. So touch that, and then use the knob to adjust your squelch. Touch it again and use the knob to adjust your volume. On the side here, we have our distress button, little red button underneath of there. Obviously, don't press that unless you absolutely need it. Then to key up the mic and call, press the button on the side there. Press and hold the 16 and 9 button to turn it off. That slides back in and locks there. With, with that said, we've covered everything on the dash. We're going to work our way up to the bow now, go over the windlass, and kind of work our way back and cover where everything is and what it does. So up in the bow of your Cobia 320cc, your nav light is front and center here. This pops down and locks. Pull the tab on the front of it to pop it back up. One over from there, we have our windlass. Inside of our windlass box, a couple things you need to know about. The windlass sits right there. Right next to that, we have our anchor safety chain. This windlass has the potential to free fall. Anytime you're not using the anchor, this must be hooked up. Um, I've repaired quite a few bows of boats because the anchor fell while they were running. We don't want to do that, so keep, please keep that hooked up. Also, inside of here, we have our raw water wash down hose. Then access to all of our link anchor line below that. It may be necessary at some point to untangle the line going up into this because it'll get snagged up and hung up and won't work. Next to that, we have our two pop-up cleats, one on each side. Coming back from there, we have our four kite rod holders in the bow, two on each side. Below that, we have our JL Audio speakers up in the front. As we come stern from there, we have two USB chargers, one on each side. And then we have our pull-out backrest. These lift out, turn, and drop in. And then when they're not in use, they lift back and stow, so they're out of the way. I really like that on the 320. Underneath, in the center, between the two seats, we have our bow table. I'm not going to bring it all the way up. So it takes a while, but up and then down. Please make sure nobody's toes are underneath there when you're retracting it or deploying it. Courtesy lights both sides down low. You have a large storage compartment right there. And then coming around here, 
We'll go down inside the console and look at a couple things down here. So inside of here, we have our toilet, we have our sink. The fresh water switch must be on for that to operate. Right below that, we have our toilet flush and our overboard macerator. And we have our cabin light switch, which is our overhead lights for inside of here. On this back wall, we have our breakers. These are breakers for all the switches on the dash. And then above that, we have access to all of our wiring for our electronics. Our fuse block is right here. Everything is labeled for what it is. We have our Yamaha diagnostic port right there. Then we have our marine network up here. Again, everything labeled. Um, really nice, really easy to understand where everything is. And that just lifts back up, twists, and locks. Behind me, we have a small closet storage. And then down here we have access to our holding tanks, our uh, windshield washers right there, our through hauls and everything are all right there. Again, all easy to get to. Two drawers for storage, one there, one there. As we move aft, our first fish box is right here in the floor. Again, these will not drain out without the switch that's on the dash. Coming slightly further back from there, we have our fuel fill. The fuel fill, there's a fill on both sides. There is only one tank. You can fill from either side of the boat and fill the tank. As we move back from there, we have our second in the, in the deck fish box, along with our battery charger plug. Hook your extension cord up to this and it will charge the batteries. Underneath of this covering board, we have our dive door or dive ladder for the side door. This flips over. This opens up. And the dive ladder drops in these two inserts here. Then to close it, shut this door, lift and twist and then fold this back over. Coming around from there, we have our hatch. This is our bilge access on this boat. Press and hold the hatch button up. Now that the rear hatch is up, if you look down here, we have access to our fuel water separators and our primer balls. Um, not something you really need to worry about. We replace those at the first hour, first service, which is at 25 hours. Then we'll do them every 100 or every uh, year after that. Um, coming down here, a couple things to look at. We have our live wells right here and here. Straight down from there, we have our live well pumps, these tournament 600 pumps. They are on seacocks. The seacock must be in the up position in order for that to work. Coming over one from there, we have another seacock that goes through the bottom of the boat. This is for our raw water pump. That seacock must be open in order for the raw water pump to work. Right next to that, we have our fresh water pump and our fresh water tank. Again, this must be filled in order for the fresh water to work, and the switch on the dash must be on in order for any of the sinks or showers on the boat to operate. Straight down in the center here, we have our Airmar B175L through haul transducer. Then we have our Optimus steering pumps, one there and one behind it. Um, if you ever get into a situation where you cannot steer the boat and the pumps have failed, there are valves on the side of each pump right here. Twist those open, which is clockwise. Straighten the engines manually, and then you'll be able to drive back in using your throttles. Last but not least, in the rear center there, we have our uh, roll bilge pump with a float switch. Float kicks, floats up, kicks on, floats down, kicks off, and will pump out any water that's in there.
Moving back up again under our starboard covering board, we have our fresh water spigot. Under our port covering board, we have our raw water spigot. And then up top here, we have a shower. Twist it to operate. Again, switch must be on for any of that stuff to work. Um, in the hard top, couple things to talk about. Outriggers, they're right up here. Flip that lever up, twist the handle, and then rotate out. They will lock once they're out. Flip the little lever back down to lock it. With that said, we're done on the top sides. We're gonna hop down, go over a few things on the engines, and we're about wrapped up here. Moving to the back of the boat, we're gonna talk about your engines a little bit. These are the Yamaha F350s. Uh, these are V8s. These require a little bit of special maintenance, and we're gonna talk about that now. So first and foremost, your break-in period on these engines is the first 10 hours. You wanna vary your engine RPM. Uh, somewhere between, let's say you run for a while at 3,000, then you go to 3,500, 45, 4,000, 5,000, 47. You do have to open the engine up all the way at some point, but the big key here is just vary your engine RPMs for the first 10 hours. Your first service is at 25 hours. That is the most important service you're going to do. So when this engine hits somewhere between really 18 and 25 hours, we're going to get the first service done. That is an upper and lower oil change, along with a fuel, uh, primary fuel filter on the front of the engine and a fuel water separator change. We do a visual inspection of the engine. We look at the metal shavings in the oil, if there are any, and make an assessment there on if she's healthy or not. Again, very important service. Um, do not miss that one. After that, every 100 hours, we're gonna do an upper and lower oil change. Every 200 hours, we're gonna add spark plugs to that oil change. Every 300 hours, we're gonna add water pumps and thermostats to that oil change. 400, again, spark plugs get added to the oil change. And at 500, we start inspecting timing belts. What's different about the 350 than all the other Yamahas is during winterization, we have to run antifreeze through them. Um, 350s have small cooling passages at the bottom of the head allow water to drain out of the head. If you run aground and get any sand, muck, or anything up in there, it will not allow the head to drain. The head will then freeze and crack. So it's very important that when it starts getting cold out, we get antifreeze through these engines. I cannot stress that enough. Super, super important. Cannot miss that. So winterizations on these engines are more important than any other engine out there. Additional stuff on the 350, there's really not a whole lot. Your dipstick is located right here. Pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in. And you want the oil level to be between the two dots, which is going to be hard to see on video, but currently it's right there. As long as it's somewhere between those two dots, you're good to go. If it's a little bit higher or a little bit lower, as long as it's between the dots, we're all good. Don't worry about that. As you can see, everything in here is covered in plastic. There's not a whole lot you can see. Spark plugs lie underneath it here. Oil filter, I can't even show you on this engine. It's buried so far under the front, but it's on the front of the engine and an impossible to get to place. Top of the engine, we have our oil fill. Right next to the oil fill is our oil quantity information. Uh, we pump out all of our oil, but there is an oil drain located right underneath of this chap. We're gonna look at something on this engine here. Our oil, our water flush out. So when you're done at the end of the day, you wanna flush your engines out, unscrew that, pop it off, and you'll be able to flush your engine out through there. Screw that back on, good and tight. As we come around here, in the center we have our GT51 transducer. 
we have our drain plug for the boat right there in the middle. While we're down here looking, our oil fill screw is behind our forward water pickup. You fill it until oil comes out the top here, and then you put the screw back in. We also have our underwater lights on both sides in the stern here. And that pretty much wraps up the engines. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, feel free to call 302-436-1737 or shoot me an email and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Uh, congratulations on your new purchase and I look forward to hearing from you.